was this enormous craft pacing beside us. Enormous hull, completely circular, with a flattish dome in the middle. And standing beside her was a tall man. I never hesitated. I ran straight to him. Crawford series in a Puri episode like Bella Swagara. Between 1954 and 1963, she has been contacted multiple times by aliens. Her name was Elizabeth Clare. She was a South African woman. Her first alien visitation supposedly occurred when she was seven, and she was one of the first women to claim a sexual relationship with an extraterrestrial. Elizabeth was born in 1910, at Mooley River, Natal. As the youngest daughter of Samuel Bancroft Wollett, and Florence Wollett. Here, at age seven, Elizabeth and her older sister Barbara also had their first supposed UFO encounter. While feeding their silly young puppies outside, the farmhouse Elizabeth and her sister claimed that they witnessed a silver disc, bathed in a pearly luster, which swooped over them. In 1954, her sister May, then resident on the farm White Elif, in the Natal Midlands, relayed to her that the native Zulu people were reporting, appearances of the lightning bird in the sky. In response Elizabeth and her children, traveled from Johannesburg to the farm, and she ascended flying saucer hill the following day, December 27th. There she claimed to have seen the starship descend. It hovered three meters above ground, while only emitting a soft hum, its hull spinning, though its central dome remained stationary. The spaceman who later identified himself as Aiken was supposedly clearly visible through one of three portholes, but a barrier of heat that emanated from the ship prevented her from approaching. And his scout ship departed again. On July 17, 1956, after their family farm was sold, she made a subsequent visit to the area, and claimed to have taken a series of seven photos of Aiken's scout ship, using her sister's simple brownie box camera. The visits by Aiken culminated in a day-long rendezvous with Elizabeth, on the high plateau of Kathkin Peak, where he supposedly presented her with a silver ring which enhanced their telepathic connection. Their love was consummated and a child was conceived. I surrendered in ecstasy to the magic of his lovemaking, our God is merging in magnetic union, as the divine essence of our spirits became one. After a terrestrial pregnancy she and her milligrams car were transported in 1959 to Aiken's home planet, Meaton, supposedly orbiting Proxima Centauri, in the nearby multiple star system Alpha Centauri. There she delivered a son, who was given the name Ailing. He stayed behind on Meaton to be educated, while Elizabeth reluctantly came home. There were no cities or skyscrapers, as Earth people know the many were on Meaton. Homes were scattered in park-like grounds. There was an abundance of all things, needed by civilization, food, water, and all materials for building, an unlimited supply of energy. On tap from the atmosphere in the universe, no shortages of any kind, and, no monetary system at all. Elizabeth died of breast cancer, at age 84, leaving her second book, The Gravity File, unfinished. The book filled in the gaps of the first, besides elucidating the military and political aspects of UFO research, and explaining Aiken's electrogravity propulsion technology. Before her death she related to acquaintances that Ailing was now an astrophysicist, who was crisscrossing the universe with his father, his space woman Clea, and their son.